Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most important pieces of sales, which is FU, which stands for following up. Want to get inside access to the ad campaigns that have been used by some of the most successful fitness studio brands from all over the world? The ads they've used, the landing pages, texts, emails, videos, what their prospect journey looks like? All of that is available now in LRVT, which stands for Loud Rumor Virtual Training. Whether you're a rookie in the advertising game or a seasoned professional, LRVT is designed to help you and your team advertise like the best fitness studios on the planet. Each training is well produced, thorough, and based on proven campaigns that we've ran successfully over and over again. You'll also be a member of our community where you can ask questions and get support from our team as well as the many other studio owners that we work with. To get started, go to loudrumorvt.com. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com. So why do most people hate following up? They hate following up because they hate rejection. And what happens is if you're not a seasoned sales professional, you really don't know what's succeeding and what's failing. And I use basketball analogies a lot, and uh, forgive me because I'm about to do it again, but it's important because once you hear what I'm about to tell you, you're gonna be able to have a much better understanding of what you need to do and what your expectations to be, and for your team as well, so that you guys know when you're winning and when you're losing. So when you take a professional basketball player, they're gonna make 100% of their layups, 100%. If they miss a layup, they're shocked. So is everyone in the, in, in the arena. Everyone's shocked if they miss a layup. But when you go to the, the three-point area, which is now much, much further out, now the, the best, Steph Curry, the best three-point shooters, he's only making about 50% of his three-pointers. That's it, 50%. That means he's missing as many as he's making. Now, if he didn't know, if he, if he was isolated from the rest of the world and statistics, he would probably be so disappointed in himself whenever he shot three-pointers. He'd be like, man, I make one, I miss one. I make one, I miss one. I make one, I miss one. No matter what, I can't seem to just make more than 50% of my shots. He'd feel like a failure. Keep in mind, he's the best. Now you take the average, they're making 35, 38%. That means they're missing almost 6, 70%, right? So Steph Curry not only doesn't get disappointed, but he feels proud of his ratio because he knows what the rest of the world is actually doing and that they're behind him. So he has good expectations for what his uh, close ratio, right, on a three-point shot should actually be. If let's say the close ratio was 90%, he'd feel pretty crappy about 50% and he probably should. He should probably hit the gym and start working even harder just to be able to get, you know, good. But the fact is he's the best. Okay, now let's go into sales. When you're getting referrals, you should be closing 10 out of 10. In fact, if you missed a referral, you should, you know, everyone in the arena is going to be shocked. You should figure out what you did wrong because those people are coming to you closed already. The member that referred them over probably already talked to them about price, the workout, why they like it. They already know someone in there. Uh, everything's figured out. Now it's just a matter of you closing the door. If you didn't close it, chances are you messed up. I don't know what you did. You Maybe you sat down with a cigarette hanging from your lip or maybe you didn't brush your teeth that day or maybe you weren't paying attention to them or you were too busy on your phone. I don't know how you would have messed that up, but you messed it up because you should close 10 out of 10. Okay. When it comes to everything outside of referrals, the closing ratio begins to dip. Just like everything outside of a layup for a basketball player, the make percentage begins to slip. That 13-footer, that 18-footer, the 23-footer, three-point shot, all that, the further you get from the hoop, the more likely you are to miss and the expectations become less, lower, okay? So when it comes to outside of member referrals, how do they come in? Are they just a walk-in? Because they kept seeing your studio as they go to and from work every day and they've always thought, I should go in there, I should go in there. I really need to get in shape, I should go in there. It looks like a cool place. And then finally they walk in, that's gonna close a lot easier than some other things. Not as good as a referral, because they don't know a lot of the things. They don't know your pricing and all that stuff, but they're gonna close much better than the next levels we're gonna talk about. Okay, maybe they went on Google and they, they typed in, you know, fitness center near me or get in shape or gym near me or something like that, right? And they give you a call. That's a good lead because they have intent. The trouble is when they Google that, about 13 other options pulled up on the same page. So they're going to be shopping around. So you still have to be better than the average salesperson because if the other people have better than average, they're going to close you, right? You're average and they're better than average. They're going to close and you're going to lose that sale. So that's the next thing. 
Now, when you go into disruptive advertising, which has high volume of leads like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, it's called disruptive advertising because you're disrupting them, right? They're doing something outside of looking for ads or checking out what their family's doing or they're watching videos or whatever, and then your ad comes out of nowhere. That's disruptive advertising. Responsive is like Google, right? They, they wanted an option and then the, the platform, Google, responded to them with options. So, and YouTube can be considered responsive as well because YouTube has both disruptive and responsive. So if you go to YouTube and you actually click on a video, let's say you wanna watch a Michael Jordan highlight reel, which is a video I'd probably watch. And then before you get to watch it, the video before that, like in the ad plays and you have to wait five seconds to get to skip it. That's disruptive, right? Because you wanna watch Jordan, but then this comes up out of nowhere. However, when you type in, let's say, Facebook advertising tips, and then hit enter in YouTube because you want to watch all the different options, all those options that pop up, including the sponsored ones at the top, now that's responsive advertising. So YouTube has both platforms, which is pretty cool. Okay, so, but when you're looking at that, you get high volume. Facebook right now is it, right? Of the making of this video, Facebook is it. You got great volume. Instagram's pretty close too, but not as much volume as you get with Facebook. Okay, YouTube's pretty good as well. So these leads here are farther down the funnel, just like that three-point shine is three-point shot is farther from the rim. So they're going to need to be worked better. They're going to need a higher level of skill set in your sales process. They're going to need to be worked more. You're going to be you're going to need to follow up harder. So when it comes to following up with a referral, if you don't call them back, chances are they'll call you. But when it comes to following up with an internet lead, one that came from cold traffic, which by the way, the best studios in the world are pumping a lot of money into getting cold traffic because they know the only way to get warm traffic is to first get something cold and warm them up, right? So even member referrals, right? Oh, I want more referrals, great. The only way to get more member referrals is to get more members. What's another great, great way to get more members? Is get some cold leads, convert them into members. More members you get, the more member referrals you get. Simple math, right? If you have 100 members or 500 members, and everything else is equal, you're gonna have five times the amount of referrals in this studio versus the one that only has 100, right? So pump a lot of money into getting members and you will get more member referrals, AKA hot leads. Get more cold leads, more cold leads you get, you convert, you get more hot leads. Okay, let's go back, back into the following up. How often should you follow up? We had a studio owner that's crushing it in the sales game uh, that we just spoke at GSDCon. Actually, we had quite a few that really broke down the sales process. Uh, Brittany Welk went the deepest into it, Daniel Neary. But they go by the phrase, call until they buy or die. What that means is, I'm calling you until you buy or until you are no longer with us. Now, keep in mind, if they say, Mike, please stop calling, I'm done. Okay, then at that point, I may ask one more question. Well, you were interested at one point. What changed, right? But then if they still say that, okay, then that's it, it's over. Stop calling. But until then, they've called, they filled out the form, they had interest. There's some pain point that lives there. And my job as a business owner is to do exactly what I ask my members to do, which is you need to get outside of your comfort zone in order to get good results. And the more outside of your comfort zone you get, the better results you get. Tell me you don't tell your members that. Because I know your members, the ones that are getting the best results at the fastest rate, I know they're the most uncomfortable. Would you agree? You are no different. You have to get just as uncomfortable as your most successful member if you want to be able to get the same results as your most successful member does, but in your business. If you hate making those calls, make them. Make them twice as much as you would normally would have. We talked about the conversion rates, right? We talked about Steph Curry knows that 50% is good. Therefore, when he fails half the time, he's fine. Here's what the rates are when it comes to internet leads. Grant Cardone, who's known as the number one sales trainer on the planet, shared, online. it's online, but I saw it in his bootcamp in person, 6% of his leads, digital leads, actually get converted over into paying members, 6%. And I even asked him, I said, okay, what, what does that tell you? Now you know it's 6%, what does that tell you? He goes, I need to improve my sales, number one, and number two, I need to spend more money. Because 6% of 100 is smaller than 6% of 200. So if I get 100 leads and close six, I get six people. But if I get 200 leads and close 6%, I get 12 people. So he just goes volume, right? And he follows up hard. Now, that's the average for him. The average that we see for fitness studios is about 10%, a little over 10%. Meaning if you get 100 leads, about 10 to 11 members should come out of those 100 leads for you to be considered average among the 1400 studios that we work with, right? Now, 
definitely we have studios that are closing well below that, right? And, and you can pretty much see they don't go through any of the training. Their team doesn't go through training. They think they've got it figured out already. They just work hard and they think because they're authentic and they have a great program and they're enthusiastic that they're gonna close business and that they don't close business, then it's because that person wasn't motivated because the marketing wasn't good or because the employee didn't do it right or because there's too much competition or fill in the blank with the external reason as to why they're not selling because it's definitely not something internal according to those guys. Now, we also have people that are well above the 10% average, including the people that I mentioned earlier, Matt Kafora, Daniel Neary, uh, Brittany Wealth. These people are closing 30% of their internet leads, right? They get 100 leads, they're getting 30 paying members out of that. But Brittany, what she does, which I recommended, and, and she takes it and she does it, she GSDs, which is why she's looking at GSD con, she gets shit done. She will call her leads two to three times per day on that first day because she knows that if they came in the morning, she could probably call them right there, plus at lunch, plus again at dinner. If they came in around dinner time, maybe she'll only call them twice, right? She'll call them right there and then she may call them about 30 minutes later. Every day after for the next 14 days, she will call twice a day. She will also send a text message and an email every day during that day. When that lead first comes in, the message you send, uh, the text message you send is, hey, is this Charles, right? Whatever the name they put in, hey, is this Sandy? Mm -hmm. The reason you do that is because everybody will get everybody that gets a text message like that will have just curiosity is too strong. They're going to say, yes, who's this? And then you can call them. And when you call them, that same person that just texts, I got to know who it is. And they answer, hey, hey, Sandy, it's Mike with Loud Rumor. I saw that you filled out a form. I just wasn't sure it was you. I want to make sure before I called. Is this a good time? And now you got them on the phone, right? It's a good, good tactic. Uh, but you want to call them and you want to text them and you want to email them and you want to do it several times a day. And then after you get to that 14th day, following up every day after that, at least once a day. Now, you're always going to give priority to the leads that came in first. So if a lead comes in right now, your goal is to call them within the first five minutes. If you go to Google and type in MIT five-minute form lead, just Google that phrase, MIT five-minute form lead, you'll see there's, there's a study done by MIT that showed that when you call leads, later than, f than five minutes from that lead form being submitted, you are 900%, 900% less likely to make contact with that form lead. So if your issue right now is people aren't answering the phone, you gotta ask yourself, how many people am I calling after five minutes? Because you gotta remember, if that person filled out the form and you drove it through internet traffic, through ad campaigns like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, where 92% of that traffic is mobile, that means that there's a 92% chance that that lead came in with them doing it on their phone. And if you call them within 30 seconds to a minute of that lead coming in, where do you think the phone still is? In their hand. And because it's in their hands and that phone rings, you are more likely not only of them answering, but also remembering that they fill out that form. The longer you go, the less likely you are to not only not get them to answer, but not get them to show interest. Or even sometimes remember, I, 40 minutes after I fill out a form, I forget I fill out the form. I'm already on to something else. I'm past it, I moved, I moved on. I'm not waiting for a call anymore. I've moved on. Your prospects are no different. Four minutes later, I'm already starting. I'm, I'm on to something else, right? So make sure that you're calling as quickly as you possibly can and call often and be creative. If you haven't listened to the episode with Matt Kafora yet from Orange Theory Fitness, he's got seven seven-figure studios, seven. And he doesn't do any of the sales, his team does. He shares in there the creative ways he uses text messaging and how he looks at calling people over and over and over so that he can make contact with those leads. If you're failing 90% of the time, you're still as good as the average studio owner. If you're failing 80% of the time, you are twice as good as the average studio owner. But we hate rejection. But now that you know the benchmark, failing 80% of your time, 80% of the time with digital leads actually puts you in twice as good of the average studio owner bracket. So feel good about that. Keep following up. That's what FU stands for. Okay. Um, other than that, guys, make sure that you keep watching, subscribe, make sure that you go back, listen to some of the episodes. Don't let this one thing, just this one episode that you listen to be the thing that you go, okay, cool. I, I'm going to take this and go listen to this over and over. Have your team listen to it. Have them listen to the ones on how they should train. Go back and subscribe and make sure you get alerted and rate us as well as we'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the show. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want more training, check out loudrumorvt.com where I literally show you exactly how the most successful studio owners not only run their ad campaigns, but also run their sales processes as well. So go to loudrumorvt.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, or YouTube. And to watch more episodes and get exclusive links from each episode, go to gsdshow.com. Again, that's gsdshow.com.